Manthorpe Engineering is a precision engineering business based in Ripley in the East Midlands. They're a manufacturer of large precision components for industries such as the power generation, aerospace, oil and gas, nuclear, amongst others. Uh, today I've come here to look at the most recent uh, acquisition when it comes to machine tools and it's a Correa Fox 50. Richard Smith told me why they invested in this technology. Richard, could you just give us a very um, brief overview of Manthorpe Engineering when it was formed? Uh, well, it was formed in 1978 and it's been on this site since 1985. What? Obviously, we've expanded um, throughout the years um, to what we are today. What do you specialise in? Uh, difficult to machine um, aerospace uh, and uh, components and also for oil and gas and the nuclear sectors. And power generation is quite a, a big part, isn't it, as well for you? Uh, we've got uh, long-term agreements with uh, you know, uh, some of the main companies for uh, land-based power generation, turbine, gas turbines, and we have had for some years. Uh, just give us a, a, a flavour of the size of the company. I mean, we're standing in a huge unit here, but this is one of a few, isn't it? Yeah, we've got a, the, the large five-axis shop that you are standing in at present, built in 2007, specifically to house the 10 mil large capacity machines. Uh, we've also got a large bit more in facility, but that also has as a smaller machine in cell as well. And we've also got a smaller machine in facility, which is the more three, four axis CNCs. Also, uh, you know, the manual types of machines that have you still required. You must be one of the biggest machining companies in the area, aren't you, if not in the country? Uh, we are definitely in the area. There's larger than us in, uh, within the country, but we specialise in one-off and bespoke and development parts, and that's what our niche is, really. Um, this machine behind you, the Correa machine, it was installed uh, a, a few weeks ago, wasn't it? Can you just tell us the story about when you saw it and why you bought it? Um, well, it was, uh, we were looking for a large uh, m milling capacity and uh, during a visit to Emo uh, back in last September, this machine was on display there and it was available, it was what we were looking for, the lead time was good, the price was good and we knew the reputation of Correa through as research so uh, the decision, decision were made there and then to purchase a machine. Why did you need a machine of this size? Have you have you got milling capacity of this size already or is this mm, we the biggest? Got, we, we've got milling capacity that we can use of this size but it's not suited to the type of work that we was thinking of taking on in the future, i.e. it's basically um, larger weight capacity of some of which we was having to subcontract out to other companies. We see a part on here, I mean, is this, is this a good example of something that you, previously you would have had to have subbed out? Uh, that was something that we would have subbed out previously to um, a local subcontractor. Um, it's all part of uh, learning the machine and uh, the programming side of that, so it's good to uh, be able to learn the programming side of that on something that's not quite as important. That's a fixture we, we, we're working on, so if, it, if, any, if there are mistakes made, then it's not critical to the part. Because when we look at some of these other parts that you're doing, these really are quite classy uh, precision engineering parts, aren't they? We've got some large parts that we do that have, have got tight tolerances on, um, and they're high-value precision castings. And this is where you'll get use out of the positional head, the rigidity of the machine, uh, and the fact that this has so many elements of controlling growth and all of those aspects to make sure you make these parts right. Yeah, well, we used, we used to uh, using the mill turn capacity of other machines we have in the shop. Um, it's all about reducing setup, setups on each machine in um, component, and uh, and with that goes production time saved and also the quality of the parts improved as well. Um, so you saw it at Emo, you ordered it. Tell us about the journey from then to where we are now, because it's only a, f a matter of months. Normally a machine of this well, size, you'd have to wait. The, 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 part, the uh, machine at Emo wasn't 
exactly what we required. We, we require our machines to be fully enclosed, so that was um, discussed and sourced. That went to Ed. Also, a few other modifications, high pressure through coolant and uh, a few other requirements that we speci you know, specified. So, from September last year, um, I went to um, Correa in Spain in January to do the factory acceptance tests. Uh, after that, it was within um, three weeks, it was being delivered in on site. So, towards the end of March, uh, start of March, it was the parts were coming in. The, the base had been done and the uh, assembly took place. Uh, how successful has things been so far? I think uh, working within the restrictions that have been placed on us by the pandemic globally, um, I believe it went as well as it could be expected and I was really happy with the commitment from the, uh, the guys who assembled it. DTS, I thought, handled everything really well with the issues that they got and uh, supply of engineers that wasn't forthcoming from Spain for obvious reasons. So the installation team that we had worked really well, had very little problems and any we did we worked through them. It was working with very little information with the, uh, with the modifications to the garden but they came together and did a fantastic job.